Welcome back, everybody, to the Homa Team Builder Dynasty on College Football 25. Last episode, we earned our very first win in conference play on the year, taking down Troy for the first time in this dynasty's history, thanks to a great second half performance, a huge comeback to move to three and four on the season. Steven Breda had a really strong second half performance, passing for over 300 yards. The ground game came to life after the first half, where we could not really establish the run early on. And we had big days for players like CJ Nelson, who returned the second half kickoff for a touchdown to just breathe some life into this team. And LaShawn Gray had 10 grabs for 100 yards plus a touchdown. Both guys break out in this past week. Now we're looking for a back to back victories for the first time this year coming against Texas State, who we still have not beaten through our first two years. This will be our third chance, just like against Troy last game. Texas State is coming off back-to-back -back Sunbelt Conference Championship victories, so they're the team to beat if we want to really show that we have improved these past two years. P.J. Hatter comes in as a redshirt junior. Our last two games against them have not been great. We played some solid defense against Texas State in our last game against them. But the game prior to that, we allowed 56 points back in year one. And he's only thrown two INTs so far this year for a fantastic rating. But this is an offense that likes to run the ball a lot. They don't really get too many passing yards, but they do run the ball, especially with their quarterback. Hatter nearly has the most carries on the team, so expect a lot of read options, speed options, and design quarterback runs in this game. And they have some solid receivers like Bo Sparks, who missed our last game against this team. We'll see if he will have a big impact here as he is a redshirt senior. But Chris Dawn is going to miss this week after our last game against him. He absolutely destroyed us with two big touchdowns. So they're going to miss one of their biggest playmakers. They get one back compared to last year. This defense, though, does not have a lot of sacks. They don't have any standout pass rushers. So if we can just protect our quarterback well then we will have a good shot to get our first win against this program in this dynasty and while homa has no current injuries to speak of going into this game texas state is missing players on both sides of the ball we already talked about chris dawn but another top three wide out for them eric reddick is out for the rest of the season they're going to miss their starting free safety, Tice Williams, as well. So a team captain down for the count. And they're also missing a starting defensive tackle in Steven Artmore. So this is a game, a real chance to get our second Sunbelt win and to get us to our highest win total of the entire dynasty. Because last year we had three wins. Year one, we had two wins. If we win this game, we are four and four for the first time in team history. So here we go, on the road, at Texas State, they're back-to-back -back conference champions. We're looking for our first win streak of the season and our best win total at four wins. Can we do it here today? It's the home of Bobcats taking on the Texas State Bobcats at UFCU Stadium. And wearing their blackout uniforms, Homo will start with the ball. Return brought out from the end zone. It's CJ Nelson up to the 23 yard line. That is where the offense led by Steven Breda will open this ball game. He comes in with eight touchdowns, six INTs. He has started six of our seven games this season. And we go empty on first and 10. Breda looking right side and caught for a first down by Javon Moore. Breda fakes the handoff on first down. Looks down the field and the pass is broken up for Tanner Millam. Three straight throws to open this game. That one's caught across midfield by Javon Moore. On the 49, we hand it off. It's Karan Boyd up the middle. He picks up three. 
clean pockets underneath. This is Maverick Bentley on the catch. He picks up five. That sets up third and two. Breda looking left. He's got a man open. It's Nelson for first down yardage. From the 33, running left, and Boyd's going to lose two on just his second carry of the afternoon. You have seen this offense have slow starts for pretty much every game this year. Looking to open the scoring here on the opening drive. Here's Middleton up to the 24-yard line, and it's third and short. The handoff. Boyd will get the first down. With time to throw, it's Breda, but he takes off instead and runs right into a defender. It's Justin Kirkpatrick with the first sack for Texas State. After a loss of five, we go with the reverse. Milam trying to get positive yardage, but he's dropped for a second straight loss. And that brings up third and 17 for the Bobcats. Texas State backs off with pressure. Breda looking deep, and it's broken up, intended for Javon Moore. Out comes the field goal unit. It's George Lincoln with a 46-yard attempt. The kick is good, and Homa strikes first. Texas State comes out for their opening drive from just inside their 20-yard line. Here's the handoff to the outside. Nice tackle made by J.R. Lehan. Hatter hands it off. Broken tackle, and Manu Ahid gains seven more yards to bring up third and short. Three straight runs on the opening drive for Texas State as Heed picks up first down yardage. And now a keeper for Hatter. Defense is ready for it and the ball comes out, but it's recovered by Texas State. Hatter makes a change on second down. He'll hand it off and sweeping right. He breaks a tackle and will lose one yard. Third and long. Texas State goes empty, Hatter incomplete down the field, broken up by DeMarvin Holland. The defense gets an opening drive stop. From the 32, out comes the Homa offense, leading by three. Screen setting up for Javon Moore, who breaks a tackle, stays on his feet and gains 10. You go empty and float it to LaShawn Gray, who picks up seven yards. Big third down for Texas State. Braid is going to keep it, but he's planted for a short gain of one. And we will punt from just across midfield. And that's a great punt inside the two-yard line. That is where Texas State is pinned. That's first and ten for the home team. First quarter coming to a close here soon. A lot of running early on. Only one pass attempt for P.J. Hatter so far. But now they have some breathing room. They'll hand it off again, but the defense is all over it. Draymond Gates and Jordan Underwood in the backfield for a loss of three. And now they need eight yards to keep this drive going. Sweeping right, and we are all over it. We go to the second quarter. Homa starts from just about where they punted from on their last drive. Really strong start for the Homa defense as Middleton checks in on the ground and gains eight. Rada pumps. Pressure coming, but he gets it away cleanly to his target. That is Treyon Bell for a first down. Now in the pistol. Play action. 
Breda scanning, firing, and completes to Javon Moore. Already up to nearly 60 receiving yards. He's been busy early on in this one. We'll hand it off on first and 10. Boyd with a patient run. But so far, solid run defense by Texas State. Trips top of the screen on second down. It's a speed option. Breda will keep it. And we get nothing out of it. Third down, needing nine yards. Breda will take off. Running outside, he will fight his way in the end zone for six. A 14-yard scramble. And Breda will get us back on the board. I want to see Breda use his legs a lot more often because that will give us a much more dynamic look on offense. And he gets just inside the pylon for the touchdown. George Lincoln's PAT will make it 10 to nothing. I've been very impressed by the offense and defense so far. Both sides of the ball have been pretty awesome to open this game. But can our defense get another stop here on the third Texas State drive? Already nine carries for Manu Heed, but so far he has not been very effective. He'll hand it off on third down, and Heed is not even close. A questionable conservative play call by Texas State. They will punt for the third time in this game. We are killing them right now in time of possession because of our defense. From the 41, first play from scrimmage and Breda not on the same page as his target Tanner Millam. That'll bring up second down and 10. Four man rush, Breda steps up in the pocket and floats it complete. It's Javon Moore again. Rush coming. Good move by Breda to get outside the pocket and complete that pass underneath. That's Millam for a gain of six. Sets up third down and four. We fake it to Boyd. Breda completes it. Diving grab made by CJ Nelson. Homa up to the 11-yard line deep in Texas State territory. We're going to keep it through the air. Breda underneath and out of bounds goes Moore for one yard. Third down. Pressure comes off the edge and the pass is caught for another Homa touchdown. This time it's CJ Nelson. Two total touchdowns already for Steven Breda. One on the ground, one through the air. And Nelson picks up right where he left off in our last episode. And Homa is looking very strong here early on in this one. We have not seen this program start a game quite like this maybe ever in this dynasty. It's 17 to nothing Homa. And Texas State still cannot get anything going on the ground. They're going to have to start throwing this ball a lot sooner here as we are under four to go in the first half. But Hatters dropped for a loss on the read option. They need 13 yards. Hatter under pressure. He escapes the pocket, takes off, and he's got a first down and a whole lot more across their 35-yard line. He had nearly 90 carries coming in, so you got to expect the run from their quarterback. There's the best run so far for Manu Heed. That'll get them into plus territory at the 47-yard line. He'll give it right back to Heed. He is tackled quickly by a couple of different home defenders. Trying to get their first points on the board here right before halftime. They still have all three timeouts plus the warning to stop the clock if they want. Sweeping left and he is dropped for a loss of three by Draymond Gates. Empty on third down. Hatter rifles one over the middle to Heat. It's caught. Big gain inside the red zone. 
From the 16, four-man rush, dumped underneath. Gain of 10. Goal to go for Texas State. The path is picked in the end zone, and there's space to return this. Hatter brings him down himself. What a play by the home of defense. After all of that, their best looking drive, it ends with a turnover. That is Shakir Pounds, the true sophomore with the INT. He is not a secondary player. He's a linebacker in coverage. And he gives home of the ball back. A shutout brewing for this defense in the first half as Breda is pressured. And that pass goes incomplete. We'll keep it through the air. Breda. Nice pass. It's caught by Nelson. Room up the sideline. And uh, Texas State territory once again. And that will get Nelson over 500 receiving yards already this year. He has been a huge playmaker for us. And over half of these games to this point. These last two weeks especially. Under 90 seconds left to play in the first half. Breda escapes the pocket, takes off, and has a first down and more. From the 28, we fake the handoff. Breda barely gets the pass away. And on second down, he's pressured again, but will not take a sack. We need 10 on third down. The pass is batted away. He was looking for LaShawn Gray. Another 46-yard attempt for George Lincoln from the left hash to make it 20 to nothing. The kick is wide the left and no good. So both teams fell to score on their last possession. Hatter looking deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage incomplete. They go empty on second down. A four-man rush. Hatter bails, takes off, and slides after seven yards. Three yards to go on third down. This pass is caught. Nice tackle made by Cord Shaw. But it's going to be a first down for Texas State. They got one timeout left. Seven yards shy of midfield. Hatter checks it down to Heed. Pass is incomplete down the field. Great coverage, blanket coverage by DeMarvin Holland. And now it's another third down for the Bobcats. Adder has time, and this one's caught just inside the 40. And they've only got time for a few more plays here in the first half. Adder checks it down again and out of bounds. It's a gain of seven. And with 10 to go, they will take a long field goal. A 50-yard attempt. This one is through the uprights and good to close the gap back to two scores. That will take us to halftime here at UFCU Stadium. A very strong start. One of our best starts in a game of the entire dynasty to this point. We have killed these guys in time of possession. We're beating them in yards per play. We are killing these guys passing-wise. Breda has been fantastic so far. No mistakes. And he has shown off what he can do with his legs and his arm. And so far, both sides of the ball playing very well. Now it's about putting a complete game together in both halves. Texas State will have it to open this third quarter. They'll start on the ground with Heed. He gains five. They'll fake it to Heed now. Hatter's got a lot of time to throw, and he's got a man wide open and gone. It's Bo Sparks. No, it's not. It's Evans, but still a huge touchdown for Texas State. An immediate big play to open the second half. That is exactly what they needed. Kylan Evans with the play. Just a simple go route, and we get beat deep. 
That is Coleman, our free safety in a one-on-one -on -one coverage. And they get scores on either half to end the first half to open the second half. And it's back to one score just like that. So can the Homa offense respond? At 17-10, we'll start with a carry for Terrence Middleton, but... Again, the ground game has not been very effective so far for either team. Rado will throw it. He's got a man open. It's Maverick Bentley inches shy of first down yardage. Third and short. We hand it off and Boyd gets enough to move the chains. Four-man rush. Quick throw and caught at the sideline. Gain of eight. Rada with good protection will now bail a clean pocket and run for first down yardage. And now running upfield, it's Karan Boyd with five yards, one of his best runs so far in this game. He is now spelled on second down by Middleton. Rada over the middle. A nice catch in traffic made by Nelson. Another third and inches play coming up. Motion for Nelson. We fake it to him, and Breda is sacked. Texas State defense not fooled by the double play action fake, and Homa will have to punt. From their 29, here comes Texas State looking to tie things up on this possession. Hatter keeps it and is dragged down by JT Odom. Back to throw now, and Hatter's pass is caught across midfield. That's Bo Sparks. Hatter escaping the pocket with pressure on his blind side, and he's got a huge gain inside the home of 20-yard line. Six runs for 62 yards for the star Texas State quarterback. And now it's first and 10 from the home of 17-yard line. Hatter makes a change. He will keep it himself again. But this time we're all over it. Another read option keeper, and El Odom is right there for the tackle. It is a loss of one for P.J. Hatter. And now third and long for the home team. Hatter will escape the pocket again, but with a QB spy and a player in pursuits, it's only a three-yard scramble. And they are held to a field goal attempt. The kick from Ward is up and good. It is a four-point game. 17 points unanswered by Texas State. Can Homa get their first points of the half here? Breda completes. It's Tanner Mellum's first reception of the day. Goes for a big gain of 23 yards. We'll hand it off on the next play, and Boyd's got a hole. Two plays to get over midfield. Little boot play, and that pass is broken up. That was a tight window throw from Breda. Now we're going to go empty on second down and 10. Little pump fake. Breda looking deep. It's picked off. He didn't see the safety. Our first turnover of the afternoon. Breda thought he had Tanner Millum wide open down the sideline, but it was a late throw, and the safety cuts off the pass. No one, by the way, in for their injured safety starter, so a big play by their backup as Hatter takes off and is hit down by Underwood. Another read option. Hatter keeps it and will move the chains for Texas State. Delayed give, Heat hits the gap and gets nine and a half more. And now it's Texas State across midfield once again. Another read option, keeper, but Underwood is ready for it. 
He's been going after Hatter all day. It's a loss of four and a half, which brings up third and five. Defense looking for a huge stop right here at the close of this third quarter. Hatter fakes the handoff. Pressure coming. Floated and broken up by Lehan. A huge play right there deep down the field. And Texas State will have to punt for the first time this half. Trying to shake off the interception. Here's Breda underneath. That's going to be just enough for a first down for C.J. Nelson. Final play of the quarter. Breda rolls out, takes off, and does not get a whole lot. But the quarter is over. 11 minutes left to go. Ahoma still leads. Start of the fourth quarter. Homa looking for their first points of the second half on this possession. Breda checks it down and completes. We need seven on third down. Pressure comes off the edge. Breda escapes the pocket but is inches shy of the marker. And we're going to have to punt and give it right back to Texas State. Asking a lot of our defense in this one. The offense has not established any good drives here since halftime. Hatter hands it off. Here's he running left. He picks up five yards. And from the 30, they try it again at gain of four. Three straight carries for he. He's got the first down. On his 20th carry of the day, only 72 yards. Pretty good run defense against Heat, at least. Not so much against P.J. Hatter. But first and 10, they fake it to Heat. Deep down the field and wide open. It's another big gain through the air. Texas State inside the home of 20-yard line. Not a whole lot there. They'll hand it off again and drop for a loss. The ball comes loose. It's recovered by a defensive lineman. And that ball came out early. That is going to be Homa football. A huge play in the red zone by the Homa defense. Just the second carry for their backup running back. And on the carry, he coughs it up. DJ Dean jars it loose. And Cade Bloom recovers. An absolutely huge play by Homa. And now we go to the ground with Karan Boyd. Gain of seven. Can the offense just give us some breathing room here on the scoreboard? Quick throw out to Nelson. He's up the numbers and he is gone. Touchdown, Homa. Just what we were looking for. The second touchdown for C.J. Nelson. That makes it three in two weeks. The RPO catches Texas State off guard. They were not ready for it. And Nelson turns up field, turns on the Jets, and scores for six. From the 31. Hatter facing pressure. Gets the pass away, but a great tackle is made right there by Coleman. And that will take us to the other side of the two-minute warning. Empty look for P.J. Hatter. He's got time to throw. He's going to air it out deep. And it's broken up. They need 10 on third down. Over the middle. Caught and racing up the fields. A big first down for Texas State's they burn their first time out. They have two left. This game is not quite over. Quick throw for Hatter and wide open inside the five. Their offense has been way more dynamic in this second half. And they are close to finding themselves right back in this ball game 
inside two minutes. Hatter takes off and will score. I do not want to blow this lead, guys. Texas State will have to go for two to make it a three-point game. Hatter hands it off. Heed has a lot of defenders to beat, and he will not get close. And now for the onside kick. It is recovered. No, it's, it's recovered by Texas State. It goes off a homo player, and we can't corral it. They start from the 40. Hatter looking deep, and it's broken up by Juan Bolden. Our defense has to get a stop. You just got to keep these guys out of the end zone. Hatter has all day to throw. Caught. Big gain inside the home of 35. I can't believe what is happening. How do you not recover that onside kick? Empty look for Hatter. Only a four-man rush. It's batted down by JT Odom. Our defense has to come through here. And it's broken up by Coleman. Looking for both sparks. Just shy of the end zone. Just get two more stops and the game is over. Hatter is sacked on third down. Jordan Underwood, a huge play. And now it's fourth and 21. Just get the stop. Hatter. Feeling pressure incomplete as he's in from behind. And the defense forces a turnover on downs. Thank God. One first down ends the ball game. And we're going to kneel the ball on third and seven. With 52 on the clock. They will have... One or two final plays to get the ball all the way down the field. What is that punt? That is a horrible punt. They actually have a chance. Just play private defense. They have no timeouts left. 12 seconds to go. They got to go 66 yards for a touchdown as Hatter's pass is incomplete. Hatter back to throw. Pressure coming. Thrown away again. No, it's not. It's caught. Inbounds. The clock expires. And Homa wins back-to-back -back games for the first time since the first two weeks of this dynasty. 24-19, your final score. And we have our biggest win total of any season to this point. And we are 4-4 four and four on the year behind back-to-back -back player of the game performances by Steven Breda. Four hundred plus yards of offense for both teams. And both teams also go at 50% or worse in the red zone. A couple of turnovers forced by either defense. But we escape this one on the road for back-to-back -back wins. P.J. Hatter, 15 for 27, over 330 yards through the air. Only 55% complacent percentage. Great job by our secondary for the most part, especially there in the first half. The ground game was... Held in check for the most part, but they were they were definitely better in the second half, especially with PJ Hatter taking off for several big scrambles. But how about our defense coming through with several tackles for loss? Uh, several, well, let's take a look at the home of defense. Several tackles for loss, four for Underwood, a pair of sacks from Underwood and Dean in the second half. And a big pick by Shakir Pounds in the end zone. And then how about our quarterback, Steven Breda? 24 for 36, 338 through the air. Two touchdowns, only one INT. The ground game was not very good for us. We got to work on that. 
and think about how we can improve the ground to be more effective game by game. But CJ Nelson with back to back 100 yard performances. He's got three touchdowns in three weeks, two on offense, one on special teams. Devon Moore, a strong first half with 97 yards and seven grabs. Great job by those two. And a really good job by this offensive line to give Breda a chance to get several clean throws away. Only two sacks allowed compared to, I want to say, four plus for nearly every other week. But what a win. A very strong first half. Just enough second half plays to come out on top. And now we are back to 500 for the first time since weeks one and two. In recruiting, we have 120 hours to spend at 16 scholarships offered so far and 19 left to give out to either high school prospects or transfer portal targets. And middle linebacker is going to be a big spot for us to address. We have several guys being looked at here. We've already got Terry Boyette, the three-star gym, committed to our school. And we're targeting a three-star gym and Kyle Parker as well. We looked at Jacquez Michelle, another gym with a pass coverage archetype. We looked at Mike Surratt and Frank Tryon, all three of whom are very speedy linebackers. We're going to sort of pour more hours into Surratt because he's got high interest in Indiana. So we'll get we'll, we'll definitely just tack on some more hours for him and try and secure that early commitment from him. And then for Frank Tryon, I still want to get him here as well. He has um, a very good athletic profile and a high pass coverage outlook. He's got South Alabama and Southern Miss also targeting him. They're both going to be in their top three for sure with a week 13 visit already scheduled for the Jaguars. We'll offer him a scholarship. I'm going to offer a scholarship here to Damian G because safety is also a need for us on defense here. And if we offer him, we should surpass Georgia Southern to get into his top three. We don't have him. I know we do have him scouted here. 76 zone coverage, 85 speed. We'll definitely use our last five hours on him. And Underwood secures a Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week for that big performance against Texas State. Great job by him. Now we have a game against the 1-7 UL Monroe Warhawks. We had a heartbreaking, brutal, devastating loss against them towards the tail end of last year. Now a chance to get one back on them this week. But we have been really good this year compared to our first couple of seasons. We've been better on offense, better on defense. And now a chance against a really struggling opponent to go over 500 here in week 10. For some reason, we're still not getting those pop-ups for recruiting commitments, but we do secure a strong safety in Ray Brooks, a three-star prospect with 93 speed, 66 zone coverage, but 74 man coverage will definitely um, be kind of a long-term project behind Lehan, who has been our starter for this year and part of last year. And we're going to spend our last 60 hours of the week to add some more hours on to Chuck Gato, who's currently being pursued by Oklahoma State. I'll sell him on the aspirational strategy and we will just honestly stock up the points on him and fill up those hours all the way up to 75. We've got 24 hours left to spend and no close recruiting battles really for us right now, at least for guys being offered scholarship, scholarships except for Damian G and Frank Tryon. And he's probably going to commit to South Alabama, so I think we're better off just focusing our points on G. And we'll just use 25 of the rest. But yeah, we have been better this year 
than our last two years and if we get one more win we have matched our win total from our first two years combined so still four games left to go we've met our coach goal for the first time here in this series and we're looking to do even better in these last four weeks so very very promising stuff here these last two games we put together a really nice game against a team that we have not defeated so far against texas state and we get our first one against them as a program and that is going to do it here guys thank you so much for watching please like the video subscribe if you're not already and leave your feedback down below i will see you guys in week 10 against the ul monroe warhawks take care and have a great day